Games has gone through a lot since it started. There have been the most bare-bones sound effects, big fun music meant to hook you at the arcade, music that is the game, and of course, music to immerse the player in the game. talking about Overcooked Special Edition, which is the Nintendo Switch port of the original PC game. The music in Overcooked is almost all royalty-free music, which means that the game developers could pay upfront to use the song and never have to pay again, no matter how many times they used it or how many people heard it. A lot of different media uses royalty-free music because it's a lot cheaper than hiring someone to write a new song for you or paying for a more popular song and having to pay royalties every single time you use it again. Talking about Overcooked also gives me an excuse to make onion soup out of three onions, which I have here. And although I couldn't find the giant onions, I did find pretty big onions. <laughs> Um, for my recipe today, I'm going to use onions and some other things because even though it's fun to make soup out of just onions in the game, it wouldn't make a tasty soup in real life and I'm really eating this for dinner. I'm not going to let you, some home cook person, talk about this game without having ever played it before. I mean, doesn't it matter how the game feels? Whether people really like it or not, or whether they even care? Overcooked Special Edition is the, a cooperative multiplayer game where players attempt to prepare as many meals as possible. In each level, the kitchens get harder and harder to get around with moving counters, complicated design, or even supernatural intervention. This is all with the goal of preparing to defeat an evil future foodie threat. Gameplay usually involves several friends or family members screaming at each other to cut more onions or get a burning pot off the stove before the whole kitchen sets on fire. And by using royalty-free music in Overcooked, Ghost Town Games not only cut down on costs, they also picked music that would be more immersive for the players, who would associate royalty-free music with the high-energy cooking TV shows that they've seen like Top Chef and Chopped on the Food Network. And you'll need me! You're going to talk about music without a musician? I'm the most important type of musician, a composer! So you can thank me later, darlings. And this is interesting. Overcooked uses music from royalty-free online music websites, which is what a lot of other video games and cooking shows do. Delicious! It'll be fun to talk about how that makes the game more immersive, competitive, and fun! <laughs> music! Well, there's a lot of music and sounds in Overcooked. There's diegetic sound, which the characters in the game can hear, like the mumbling crowd in the restaurant, the clanking of silverware, and then there's non-diegetic sound, which only the players can hear, like the soundtrack. I plan on talking about three different non-diegetic pieces from Overcooked, and then relating the music to cooking shows, TV, and film. You both can stay and try my soup if you want. Is it vegan? Well, actually, yes. Then let the games begin! First things first, I have to start the soup. So I'm going to be using these large Spanish onions because I couldn't find watermelon-sized onions. And in the game, the soup is made by cutting up onions, then putting them in a pot of what looks like boiling water. I'm going to change a little by cutting up the onions, putting them in the pot to caramelize, and then adding vegetable stock on top of that and maybe some other things if I think it needs it. So let's get shopping. <laughs> Now that they're all in the pan, let's get to the music. 
One of the ways that Overcooked sucks you in is with the music. It either stresses you out while you're cooking in the game, or it calms you down once you've finished a level. My favorite music from this game is the menu music for sure. It's really chill and calm, like it has a harmonica or something. It really um, chills me out after I've been screaming at my cousin for 45 minutes in the game. That piece is called Valse Sen by a composer named Christian Marzak. I really like that piece too, especially the harmonica part. You can also hear guitar, piano, and strings on this track. In, I have something to say. This piece is definitely designed to be relaxing and nostalgic. Guitar and harmonica are folk instruments <laughs> used in folk songs, so players may be more likely to think of them as homey and soothing. There isn't anything big and bad like a drum or anything like that. It doesn't get freaky at all. The guitar introduction is short and sweet, and the piano comes in with an ostinato after that, which is a little repeating thing. Even when the harmonica comes in with the melody, the tempo doesn't get very fast, so it stays chill. Yeah, this song definitely reminds me of something you'd play when you were on the way to something big, but you were stopped sitting at a campfire for the night. Exactly. And it makes sense because it's the menu music, and the menu for this game shows you this little bus traveling around to go to the place on the map where the next level will be. The fact that it's a waltz kind of makes you want to sway when you hear it. The music really gets in my head, I guess. Isn't that nice? This song is in C minor, which adds to the relaxed feel. There isn't the same resolution you'd find in non-video game music. This makes the looping more bearable. But because there's no clear end point, it encourages the player to choose a level because they aren't going to find sonic satisfaction in the menu. Lots of games try to strike this balance between menu music that's relaxing and laid back, but also encourages you to play more. The music in the actual levels gets a lot more intense, just like the gameplay. Penne for Your Thoughts first appears in level 1-1, which is the very first level of the game, and shows up in most levels when you're in a normal kitchen, as opposed to food trucks or a pirate ship, etc. This is also some of the only music that Ghost Town Games commissioned specifically for Overcooked. The song you speak of was designed by the folks at Good Kill Music. It was designed specifically for this game, and it was designed to be stressful. Let me give you a little taste of what makes this game so fun, and also super high energy. You can even see how people in the YouTube comments of videos that include this music feel about it. It's so high energy, and a lot can go wrong, and you have to work with each other to fix it. It can get really hectic. This music feels stressful and fast-paced. It almost encourages you to keep going by freaking you out more. Go to Kill Music, who wrote this piece, has a different business model than the royalty-free music composers. They compose music that their clients ask for specifically, so this piece fits the game perfectly! This piece is pretty similar to the menu music because it uses a lot of the same timbres, aka sounds, that that piece uses. There's guitar and synthesized accordion, which sounds kind of like harmonica. The addition of more instruments adds to the energy, it amps it up with a low bass sound and, most importantly, a drum kit. have stayed.
staggered entrances, which escalates the tension as more driving and rhythmic elements are added on top of the opening guitar figure. There are also dissonant intervals on beats two and four, which if you're a musician like me, you'll know makes this piece sound kind of wacky. There's an interesting sound included in this song too. It's sort of a combination between a laser, which is reminiscent of early electronic sounds in video games, and the sound a guitarist makes when sliding their fingers in between the frets. This distortion of the electroacoustic differentiation may reflect how the gamer feels when they're playing. They're out there, in the real world, engaging with an electronic fantasy. The layering effect helps the loop sound less annoying too, because it doesn't just stay so intense the whole time. When the song starts, it almost gives you a moment to breathe. At the end of the level, I want to add, the music speeds up when the timer starts to run out, and there's also a beeping countdown to the end. It's a lot. A little later, in the fourth section of the game, there's a haunted section of the map where parts of the kitchen levitate and it's very dark and spooky and there's thunder and lightning. The music for this fourth set of levels is fittingly frightening, too. Honestly, it's like I didn't come here to be attacked by poltergeists, I just want to make delicious dishes with my pals, and here are some spooks! <laughs> this one, and it's on the same website as Valsen. This song is called Bewitched Chase, and this composer specializes in the spooky. Isn't that fun? I myself have different specializations. Anyway, this piece does a lot to remind you of horror films and death. Bewitched Chase is heavy on the brass, trombones, tubas, and the like. You know, the low, loud, and shiny instruments. Western music composers have used them for a long time to scare the listener. This is a great example of how video game music often conforms to film scoring tropes. Even though this piece wasn't specifically written for the game, it may have been chosen because it uses these techniques. One interesting example to compare it to um, is the trombone theme from the 1958 film Dracula. Bloody and relevant! Bewitched Chase also uses bells, which composers like Berlioz use to convey a sense of spiritual doom. A scholar named Isabella van Elferen, who wrote a book about gothic music, points out that video games themselves have a haunted gothic quality because they create a duality between the real and the imagined, which gothic films and books also play with. And spooky games rely a lot on the cliches created by film music, often relying more heavily on them than the films themselves, as we can see here in Overcooked. This is getting boring. Well, the onions are ready and it's just about time to add broth to the soup. So I'm adding vegetable broth. I'm gonna add six cups of vegetable broth and then a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar to get that umami flavor. And then we'll just let that all simmer and wait for the flavors to combine. What's interesting about royalty-free music is that it's also used in reality TV cooking shows. You know the type. Look at this. I swear to God, it's the kind of sh you'd expect Tiger Woods to tee off with. Look at it. Rubber, rubber, rubber! And I happen 
happen to know that the Food Network has even used some of the exact same music that is in Overcooked. In episode 2 of Halloween Baking Championship, for example, they used Bewitched Chase, uh, the music from the Haunted Levels, from the fourth group of levels in Overcooked. There's only 15 minutes left! It's crazy. It's Halloween Baking Championship. There's dough, there's ice cream. By using, in some cases, the exact same music that cooking shows used, Ghost Town Games really takes player immersion to the next level because they can imagine the gameplay experience as a way of inserting the players into the world of their favorite competitive chefs. First movies, now TV comparisons? You really have been thinking about this. Music scholars compare video games to lots of other media because they haven't been studying video games for very long. And using the same music that these high-energy TV shows used in Overcooked increases the realism for the players. Even though it isn't the music the actual contestants are hearing, players are more used to hearing it as it's produced on TV. Tim Summers talks about this in relation to racing games that use the sounds in a TV broadcast of racing to increase the realism for the players. Reality TV cooking shows like MasterChef and The Great British Baking Show represent a shift in TV cooking media, specifically a shift away from marketing just to stay-at-home women to a wider audience. One scholar, Deborah Phillips, talks about how the more sinister side of these shows is that they push personal branding as a way for chefs to become more famous instead of improving their cooking skills. Another scholar, Tasha Oren, argues that the evolution of competition cooking shows reveals a form of masochism in the audience. Overcooked induces stress too, and we know that when we play it. In sort of a similar way, we play that game to inflict stress upon ourselves and those we play with. Some people named Greitmeier and Cox did a study several years ago where they observed some people playing Mario Kart Double Dash alone and in co-op mode. What they found was that people who played the game together trusted each other more. Like, they expected the person they played with to work with them to get the highest score possible. Overcooked is best when it's played in co-op mode. If you were by yourself with no one to talk to, you would just hear that really stressful music and it would be even more stressful because there would be nothing else to distract you from it. In this game, you have to work together to get a high enough score in each level to unlock new ones. Maybe you want to do that not because you want to see your friends and yourself in a stressful situation, but because you know it'll bring you closer together. Soup's up! It's not exactly like in the game because I added oil and salt and balsamic vinegar and vegetable stock, but I hope you like it! I think it's pretty good music, but being in a game exposes it to an audience that's primed to think of it as important and memorable. Gamers love their music! I mean, just look at these! Games are more memorable than TV shows. Plus, we hear the songs over and over again in the game. It's a lot easier to associate these songs with the game and with the great times you have while playing it. That's great, but how's the soup? I don't really care how it tastes as long as it fuels me to get through another run of Hades. I thought you were playing Overcooked this whole time. Yeah, and now that we're finally done talking about it, I can play something else. Honestly, good soup though.